Super Farm Over 7 here with Medieval 2 again. <laughs> I know I did it last summer, it doesn't actually feel that long ago since I last did it. But I've been saying it on the channel for a while now that when I came back to YouTube after six years, I thought it might be easier doing Let's Plays with live streams. But once I started getting a bit better and um, when my health was getting better and I felt a bit more productive, I was thinking live streams are kind of messy because whenever I live stream on YouTube, they don't save as videos, they save to, as live streams. And I feel like live streams some games work but I feel like when I live stream it's it's not really a good let's play in my opinion because I feel like there's times where I might be really uh distracted with chat or talking to chat or there might be people spamming in chat because um I'm planning to redo uh Spiral Reignite trilogy as well because there's a couple times in that where like a thirst ball would comment or someone spamming Spiral Reignite it sucks so I don't want to run the risk of any uh spammers or like, you know, bad people on stream. And not only that, I enjoy talking to people in chat, but what I'm thinking of doing, because I don't stream on YouTube anymore, I just stream on Twitch every second week. If you want to follow me on Twitch, check me out. Um, I mostly stream online content in there, but I'm thinking if I'm ever streaming, like, a retro game, go back to my childhood, we're streaming a story, it'll be on there. And depending on what it is, I might share that to YouTube, because I think some games are a bit more fun to stream, and others are fun, more fun to do let's plays of because recently i've been starting to do let's plays again rather than streams and just saving them as let's plays and i let's played medieval last summer medieval 2 i mean and medieval uh but i just thought i wanted to redo medieval 2 because well i love medieval 2 anyway and i actually do have my reasons for wanting to redo it again i don't really want to go too much into it but um as you all know medieval 2 was my first ever ps1 game uh, I, don't, I was so young i don't even remember getting it my sister did i think uh, we were friends with someone called stuart uh, who he got it with. I um, Don't quote me on that. I think it came with our PS1 that we got. I remember getting Medieval 1, but Medieval 2 was our first ever Medieval. Uh, it's the one I have like the most memories with and the most nostalgia towards, like the music, the sound effects, and uh, when I was younger I used to... Because I'm very much an introvert and I have Asperger's, I did a lot of role playing by myself rather than playing with others, and I would always like play in the back garden pretending I'm uh acting out a level like i'd be hacking up zombies I'd pretend there'd be a chalice behind a tree in my garden or something or money bags like i would always like role play medieval in my back garden pretend to be zombies coming out of coffins going Arr! and uh i would always impersonate the ones from resurrection they go ah who oh but i would always go like oh, roo, roo, oh. <laughs> i used to do stuff like that a lot and just draw my own levels i used to pretend because i'm from thurzo i pretended to just draw some levels uh to do with Thurzo, because you know they did London. <laughs> I uh, did levels that um I think of the town square inside the gardens, and I was gonna pretend that there was pumpkins that would spawn there, and uh just little things like that. It's just my childhood, honestly. I have no idea how much this game has a special place in my heart, so I'm just replaying it again because I want to do it as an actual let's play, just where I can fully invest myself in the walkthrough. And I had this made for me, isn't it cute? I don't know if I've ever shown it on video before. And I'm also doing a face cam a day. I've got a better mic than I did last time I did it. Um, I'm planning on redoing a lot of Let's Plays. I'm planning on deleting a lot. To be honest, I just want more fresh professional um, Let's Plays. I'm just very OCD, you know, so I just kind of want to do it again. I know a lot of other people think, like, oh, you're not redoing it again, are you? But I'm thinking of just deleting my previous one. Um, I'm happy with how my long play went. I'm not going to redo that anytime soon. I'm thinking of redoing a lot of long plays. Uh, I might redo Medieval 1 for Halloween. I feel like that's a very Halloween-y game. Um, but Medieval 2, I always get like in the mood to play that in the summertime for some reason. I just love the atmosphere of Medieval 2. I just love how it looks. I like the feeling of killing enemies in Medieval 2. Although I know that the game's sort of like... It's shorter overall and there's less levels, but the levels are longer. Uh, it's generally harder than Medieval 1 because the museum, the first level, doesn't have any life balls in it probably has the hardest enemies in the game that don't even appear at any other point in the game. Uh, I'll talk about that more when we get into the level. Because uh, we're going to start off with the museum today. I'm going to record a few parts in bulk right now. Uh, but I just thought, like, I've got my t-shirt on, ready for the occasion. And i got my Dan Hand icon here. I don't really know where to set them so that you guys can see them in the background. I uh, just, uh, I don't really have, like, a proper workspace because I live in my family still. I live in my mum's basement, you know. Oh, it sits there just perfectly. And my bedding's all green as well, so that's also very medieval -y. Uh So, yeah, let's just switch scene right now. And we'll just put up Medieval 2 and jump back into it. And I also uh, think on the poll people wanted to see me play a bug's life so i might actually start doing parts of that soon let me just double check how my poll is right now da, 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 da. 
yeah, a, a lot of people seem to w want me to do more Medieval 2. So at, at least it's not just me. <laughs> Other people are wanting to see it as well. So I'm just going to switch scene now and we're, go we're going to start with the museum and the Tyrannosaurus Rex. And I used to drive my dad insane with Winston. I remember when I was younger because I think uh, I didn't really play it much around my dad. I think my mom was still seeing him around about the time I used to play it a lot. I remember playing it in Aberdeen when I stayed at his house. Uh, a very tra tragic uh, circumstance that happened in my life when I lost my granddad when I was staying at my dad's house. Um, but I actually played Medieval the day I found out. But I know it probably seems like really insensitive, but it was like a escape for me because I feel like I was in a denial that I actually almost didn't believe it and it's like medieval kind of like really helped me in that time like really distract me until obviously it like hit me when I got home but that was just one memory to sort of when I <laughs> um I was seeing Aberdeen with my dad but he always remembers whenever I mention uh medieval to him he always remembers Sir Daniel Fortescue back from the dead once again and I don't think he knows anything else about the games I know I drove my mom insane with the soundtracks in this game um like Whitechapel as well I listened to that soundtrack a lot growing up that's probably my favorite level in the game and it got me interested in the history of Whitechapel I just uh, I love Bob and Barn in general like you guys are geniuses Chris Sorrell and Jason Wilson you guys are geniuses too um and another thing I was going to say is Medieval 2 um I just want to get this out in the open now actually just since uh I'll be talking more about the game when I actually get into it. I'm just going to waffle a bit about my childhood, as I did in previous parts, but I'm planning on deleting the previous parts. So that's why I'm saying it all here now. Uh, I might not delete it from the live tab, because I'll just keep my live stream separate from my Let's Plays, uh, depending on what it is I'm playing. So I'll save some uh, live streams as Let's Plays. I feel like they, they were suitable as Let's Plays. But I'm planning on redoing my Reignited trilogy walkthrough. I'm planning on doing the Crash uh, Insane trilogy. I'm going to get around to it all. Just one walkthrough at a time. I might be doing two right now. Um, but growing up, I think uh, me and my sister were lucky enough to have a friend uh, called Ryan Todd, who I, we don't speak to anymore. We never felt like we just drifted. Um, but he gave us cheat codes for the game and the vast majority of the levels we skipped but I think my mum was the first person to get past Kensington in the tomb. I don't know if it was An Andy, my sister or not. But I know overall I was the first person to complete all the levels um, when I was a bit older just before we uh, moved in with my stepdad. I remember I committed to trying to complete the levels. I know we definitely skipped Wilfram Hall because we could never get the key from the table in <laughs> inside the main hall. Um, but it's a memory my mum shares with us as well. Although she always seems to get the medievals mixed up. If I'm playing Medieval 1, she'd be like, you play Medieval 2? And I don't know how because she was obsessed with the games as well. Like, she would be helping us through it too. Um, let's just switch scene now. I know I've said it already. And I know I've been waffling for nearly eight minutes. And I've not even started the game yet. But I'll just let... Um, I'll just let the cutscenes play and everything. And I'm not going to yap through any dialogue if I can help it. Uh, just go switch to the YouTube scene. up duck station i also had to order a new second hand ps1 and ps2 because both of them have packed in on me recently i found my ps1 after losing it and lost it again so that's great <laughs> not lost it again what am i on about i mean it it's uh not working i don't know why just games aren't running on it for some reason and medieval 2 kept freezing which made my retro heart very sad uh so yeah let's build up a game now uh start file um, where's Medieval 2 at? Yeah. No time for chat. If we're ready, let's get this show on the road. Oh, sorry. Let me play the audio through my earphones. Uh, just gonna... F there we are. Ah. How's that for nostalgia? I am not even being biased here. I do genuinely think that the PS1 had the best uh, <laughs> opening logos. Uh, and this is the uh, UK logo. I don't think it even shows the US logo in the US version of the game. But yeah, I'm playing the PAL version of the game. Just true to my childhood. Just uh, getting proper nostalgic with it. Um, sorry about a sudden cut there, but I completely forgot I unplugged my controller <laughs> the last time that I uh, was playing it on here. Uh, 
well last time I was using my PC so I completely forgot but yeah we're obviously English we don't have a, a, a language selection screen I think in the US version but yeah here in the UK we have French uh, English and German and funnily enough I actually used to play the game in German and French it's how I actually know some German and French for some reason I just enjoy playing the game in different languages at times at one point I was planning to do a long play of them all different languages but yeah let's get right into it even this purple background is very nostalgic to me and I love this emulator as well it's such great quality <laughs> Are these are the events of Galavir. Not quite how it went down for me because I had the dragon armor. I never used to spear to fight him. I hope the game is not too loud over me. I think I'm louder than the game. <laughs> later rest with gloves on in the first he actually didn't have gloves on but he does it in the second one but you actually see him in the flashback with gloves on uh i don't know if that was something that they noticed they did it up but yeah it's just something i always knows in medieval 2 his waist looks a bit different too his appearance overall looks a bit different in this game but i kind of think he looks a bit more remastered in this one well he's remastered for its time i feel like he looked more real in this one i think a lot of people criticized his voice uh which i kind of understand where they're coming from i do love the game overall I feel like if it got remade, I feel like they'd have to redo certain parts of the story, like give Kia more airtime. I do love that Palethorn is more present than Zarek. Um, the professor's funny, he's a sleazebag. He's a bit questionable at times when he doesn't care about Kia's uh, disappearance, but maybe there's more than we know why he's so cold, because they might know about the twist in Medieval 3. Um, but yeah, Dan actually talks. He has a very audible voice in this game. Which I know a lot of people weren't very happy with. It doesn't get to me too much, but I never really noticed it until people point it out. <laughs> Dude. I don't know if it's just on graphics or not, but this cutscene, like, the way they looked kind of scared me when I was young. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that sound effect in a lot of things. Particularly Buffy. <laughs> We actually end up in here when we play the Kensington level. This is the epicenter of the blast. I'm actually glad I'm doing this under viewer request because I wanted to do it again. <laughs> We're also about to see uh, the woman with the Transor Shrek here is actually the same woman model uh, of the females that we have to save in Kew Gardens. I don't think we see the male in this cutscene. But yeah, this is truly go back to my roots. This was my first ever PS1 game. I played a lot of Nintendo growing up. I've not played much Nintendo in the past few years. I know I play a lot more on my PS5 nowadays, but I'm still a retro geek at heart. Like, games like this will always have my heart. And I think, I may be slightly biased, but Medieval 2 is my favourite game <laughs> of all time. But that's just, I think that's my childhood talking. I just love it so much. Loading. That's the only loading, like, actual screen that says loading in the whole game. Medieval 1 was full of them. But they obviously have, like, loading screens for the levels, but it doesn't say loading. It just says the level name before we load in. But that's the only screen that actually says loading the whole game. And I get very nostalgic over this music. We'll just let it play before I start the game. It was actually so cool that I got to play Parliament as well. Thanks to, I think it's Hidden Palace? That's actually a deleted level, which would have been cool to see completed. I have a feeling that that was going to be either the lead up to Cathedral Spires or Cathedral Spires replaced it, because I know that that level was meant to have a. Uh, I think it was a boss called Queen Victoria, but we never actually got her. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I have to call that out there. For some reason, my um, controller wasn't responding, but then it started responding when I unplugged it and plugged it in again. There we go, first level museum. So Daniel Fortescue, anyone who grew up in the 90s and played Medieval would get so nostalgic just over this intro alone. <laughs> just everything down to like the little star particles and the light around his body like coming to life. Like I, I just get nostalgic over everything about this game. Even like Winston's spectral trial, like money bags, the sound of life fountains, the look of keys. I used to always like imagine where keys would be whenever I was like role playing outside. Or where runes would be in chalices. Sir Daniel Fortescue, back from the dead once again. The great hero of Galamere. The only lie my dad remembers in the whole of the games. The back of the old museum. 
Well, things are changed since you've been away. It's a new world, but with the same old problems. So find yourself a weapon and get ready for a scrap. Oh, and if you see my spectral trail, stand in the light and press action to summon me. Oh, we don't mind that doing a webcam, do we? By the way, and uh, the logo and all that. Just thought it might look a bit more professional. But yes, very nostalgic music. Has a slight hint of Cemetery Hill to it. But yeah, the whole soundtrack is just nostalgia fuel to me. The legendary Sir Daniel Fortescue, born around 1250, died 1280. So, oh yeah, he would have because it was a battle. <laughs> I think God that's young. In the Battle of Galamir, legend has it that after defeating the evil sorcerer Zarek at the Battle of Galamir, he rose from the dead a century later to destroy Zarek once and for all. Which he did. It said that in times of great need, he will return again. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I can't believe they actually just predicted that this entire game's existence. See, so this is actually the leftovers of the Hall of Heroes, which I don't think I actually realized when I was younger. Uh, I can't tell who this is meant to be. Maybe, maybe it was meant to be Dark Steadfast, but yeah, that's uh, Stern Guard, that's the leftover of Raven Hooves, and that's M. Manzi, who presented the hell out of on uh, PS4. I wonder if I'll get a good thumbnail for this. I'll probably like just randomly restart this level when um, I'm done this part and do a thumbnail for it. And also we can come back here later when we unlock the Dan Hand ability and visit our hidden areas. I'll redo that in this let's play as well. I know I did it in my live stream, but I'll do it again. I actually, those zombies in this level, specifically for Medieval 2, I remember once we were doing a charity walk for the Com. The Com is the name of a pub uh, where I live. And I actually dressed up as a zombie from Medieval 2 and I actually won the fancy dress. It was a seven mile walk we did for charity. I can't remember what the charity was actually, come think of it. But yeah, I dressed up as one of these zombies from Medieval 2. But I just always found these zombies very satisfying to kill in particular. I used to like drawing them when drawing the levels. And um, I just like hacking off their limbs in the green goop that comes out of them. I used to always like impersonating them as well. And their spirits go up slower in Medieval 2 than Medieval 1, I just have to know as they look the same. But they go up slower. But just like Medieval 1, the spirits go in the direction of the chalice. I just have to notice, when you're near the chalice, you actually see the spirits flying towards it. And these green knights, I remember when I was younger, I hated them. They were so hard to defeat, but basically, well, most of the enemies you have to run behind in Medieval 2, because unlike Medieval 1, you can't hit an enemy while they're currently landing loads of attacks on you, because if you're like mid-swing and an enemy hits you, it'll cancel your swing. So yeah, you have to be pretty careful to avoid getting hit, because if they spam like a lot of hits on you, you won't get your swing off on them, so that makes combat a lot harder, unlike Medieval 1. I don't need that vial, I don't think. Oh, actually, yeah, might as well, because I need a little bit of health. And unlike Medieval 1, since it's in more modern day uh, London, most, well, Victorian London, you can say. It's more modern than Medieval 1 is, so I may say. There are actual guns in this game. We have a crossbow again. We have a help, we help ghost instead of gargoyles, and we have a spiv instead of a merchant gargoyle. Uh, I know a lot of people didn't like Winston Help Ghost, but he's just nostalgia fuel to me. He got me through uh, Greenwich for younger, because that would just scare me. But no, I like Winston. He's pretty cool. Also, those green knights we killed down there, I used to just call them green men when I was younger. I don't know why. They uh, come back uh, briefly in uh, Wolfram Hall, and they come back as like in silver armor with shields, and uh, briefly in Time Machine and uh, Future Fires of Sin. Sorry, I'll stop waffling now, and we'll talk to Winston. As well as an inventory, you've got two weapon slots. Select your weapon, then use the stick or directional buttons to select the slot it should go in. Once both slots are full, L1 plus square switches weapons without going back to your inventory. Should make killing things much more fun. Much more fun. It does kind of throw you in the deep end though, this level though, if you're like pretty new to the game. Like the the, the left, the, if you don't know the strategy I you know about like running behind them to hit them, because I don't think any new player would realize that it cancels your hit if they hit you. Um, all the shields are the same in this game. I think the face is a bit smaller in Medieval 2 than it is Medieval 1. But like, yeah, the copper shields give you 150, silver 250, and gold 400. We don't get the gold uh, shield for, from a chalice, we just find it in a chest in this game. Uh, vials give you less health than they do Medieval 1, and they appear less frequently, I believe, as well. Uh, and life fountains don't replenish if you visit levels later on, so they did make this game considerably harder. If you're like low in health later in the game, basically just keep replaying levels, maybe explore Dan Hand areas you can explore before, uh, don't use up all of Life Fountains if you can help it, and if you need to come back to them later, uh, just try not to lose as much health as you can, but yeah, it's considerably harder than Medieval 1 if you're pretty new to it. If you equip the shield from your inventory, Triangle becomes Defend. You can use it you with the daring, daring Dash for when dash. things get really airy. 
It's got a limited amount of strength, so use it sparingly, or it'll be you that gets a battery. Or be you that gets a battery. Let's <laughs> everything Winston says and start to feel <laughs> to me. But, um, apparently, the boy we saw and the, uh, Cutscene at the start is actually meant to be Winston, but I don't know that for sure. I just remember someone saying it. I think it was taking one one. Feeling it. groggy, Dane? Let me remind you about some of the finer points of combat. Press, press triangle, triangle to, to duck. duck. If you press triangle whilst running, you'll do a daring dash. Combine this with jump for a super jump. Try, Try it. it. In this game, we don't keep the small sword once you get the uh, broadsword, and it's called the enchanted sword, I think, in maybe one. It might be the other way round. I think it's, yeah, it's the same sword, but they have different names across the two games. But in, um, Medieval 2, the small sword turns into that, rather than, you know, uh, having it as well as. So once we get the broadsword, the small sword just disappears. I also remember his dialogue's very quiet here in French, if I remember rightly. Very quiet, I mean very small. Like he doesn't this, say a lot of this part. That look like you can climb them, you probably can. Use them to get to new areas. Use them to get to new areas. And these little, uh, small baby triceratops, I think it was. Even though the level's called Turn, or it's Rex. But it's actually a triceratops that we fight. I think my sister actually knew that. Because uh, she loved a robot warriors when we were I think she had an obsession with dinosaurs. But I remember these uh, little dinosaurs here. The fire they breathe, they reminded me of those twist rice lollies, but like they sort of remind me of candy corn now. You'll see what I mean if they actually do breathe fire at some point. Yeah, just make sure every time you're fighting an enemy, you get behind them when you do. Yeah, that's what I mean. They look like candy corn. Yeah, just make sure you always get behind enemies in this when you're fighting them. Don't let them spam hits at you from the front. It'll be considerably more so in later levels, like the peelers from White Chapel, uh, the sailor zombies from Greenwich when they have a alchemy on their head. And I used to be so childish when I saw that statue when I was younger. I used to be like, haha, boobies. I don't think even it is boobs. I think it, or it might be. Might be just some major pecs. I actually don't know if that's a man or not. But, uh, let's not assume the statue's gender. Oh, we got full health now. But yeah, if we were to come back to the level later and that was empty, it would still be empty. Um, the sound effects of this game are very good quality for its time as well. I think that was something I saw someone... Uh, I think it's uh, Reliable Rhubarb? Thank you for letting me uh, react to your... Uh, a commentary a d documentary about it, by the way. But I remember he said something about the left right here as to why it has such great quality sound to it. There is a reason for it, but I can't quite remember what it was he said, but he went really in-depth. Right, these guys here, the guards. This is the only level they appear in, and I'm kind of glad because they're really annoying. <laughs> but basically, um... You can trigger them to see you here, but then, like, you can, like, leave until they stop seeing you and then go back and try and surprise them again. But once they lose their legs, it's like they never stop knowing where you are. Like, they constantly know you're there, if they have no legs. So they get pretty annoying with Jack their legs off, but just make sure you keep getting behind them and hitting them. That's like the main strategy of this game, to like, hit your enemies from behind. Also, oh wait, yeah, sorry, I think I uh, landed too far down on this, but if you time it perfectly on top of that, you can actually jump down there without taking damage. Uh, oh, let's call these green men. If you actually come in from the right direction, uh, these are... Uh, Green Knights don't actually come out of their uh, glass until you walk towards the torch. But sometimes I would just wake them up and just smack the glass open anyways, just to get Charles' percentage. Oh, oi, oi. That's just the other got blunderbusses, so it's much more modern medieval. But, I don't know, I kind of like medieval being in like a Victorian London era. I know it's not medieval times, but it's the sequel to medieval, so it makes sense it's called medieval too. So, uh, yeah. That room with the, well, I call them the Oi Oi Men, was up here, but there's actually Spiv and uh, Winston up here, so let's go talk to Winston. This crafty scoundrel is the Spiv. He'll provide you with nearly everything you'll ever need at a hefty at a price. Hefty price. Press action to select him. We don't actually need anything from him right now. You can actually, I think you can hurt the Spiv from a distance, but if you get too close to him, it makes you stop swinging. But if you actually do manage to land a hit in him with like an arrow or something, he actually goes, ow, ow, ow! Like he actually does react to hitting them, even though the game doesn't actually let you hit him. <laughs> but if you manage to hit him from afar with like a, a bow or something, he actually goes, ow, ow, ow. So let's just kill those. But that sound effect makes me so nostalgic. That, uh, uh. Oh, where is he? I can hear him. I believe that same sound effect is in, um, 
the Madagascar game on PS2 as well. Where is it? Oh, he's glitching into the wall. A lot of enemies seem to do that in the game. It's actually funny when the peelers glitch in Whitechapel. I remember when I played with a friend I don't talk to anymore in Whitechapel. I remember we used to uh, always, uh, <laughs> uh, I think one time we, I took a rocket so I had to scratch my disc with it because I thought because the disc was still scratched, that's why the enemies would glitch. I was a bit stupid. I was really young at the time, but I thought that would make it more glitchy, but said this made my game not work. Also, when I was younger, I could have sworn the garden was on the right side and the display room was on the left, but then when I got older, I thought I could have sworn growing up that these rooms were on opposite sides of each other. Like, the opposite sides of which they actually were, is that I just think this game looks really pretty for its time. I know it's been upscaled on the emulator. I also get very nostalgic over the side of hitting these, uh, Fishes. I don't know why it sounds like it's metal over there, but that's what it makes. <laughs> also, for some reason, the leaves that fly up it kind of remind me of popcorn kernels, I don't know why. If you're very consistent with your charged up square swing, you can actually just kill a zombie with one single swing. I almost did it there. If he was fully healed, I think I might have done that one swing. Oh, there we go, we got two of them one hit. I just love the look of the hitting the zombies in Medieval 2. Just their limbs flying off and their blood flying out of their head. But the, these zombies are only in this level, kind of tend to come back in Whitechapel. But there are other zombies in the game, but they look different. There's sailor zombies in um, Greenwich, and in Kensington there are they're like topless uh, brawler zombies, I think they call them. They go like, oi, oi, yeah. But we'll get to that one on Kensington. And like the first game, there is a chalice in this, but we don't go to all the heroes. On every level, which is you'll strange. That was kind of the whole point of the chalice. It <laughs> with the souls of the vanquished. Dispatch enough Dispatch enemies, to, enough collect enemies it. to collect it. Point. Now, I get this article over the side of Winston as well. I quite often forget to get the cannon here, so I'm actually glad I remembered to get it there. There we go. And we'll just <laughs> we'll put our torch in the place of the arm because we won't be using our arm. Uh, there's very few times when they can actually. Torch. I think it's, there's one time in Greenwich and we can use it in the tomb. Oh no, we do have to use it in the tomb. Um, I can't think of another point in the game where we actually need it. You can use it, like if there's things to light it off of, you can burn people with it, but it's not, I don't think there's many points in the game where we actually need it, when I think about it. You can actually damage enemies by poking them with it, even if it's not lit. Let, let me demonstrate that now if I can. Yeah, I don't think it'll thought of damage, but yeah, it does still damage them if you hit them with it when it's not lit. I don't think I even needed a shield. Also, this game, you have to be stood still when shielding for it to act. I don't actually know how it got in there. Oh yeah, I think you can make them shoot each other, that might be what happened there. But, um... Yeah, you have to be stood still for your shield to actually shield attacks in this one. Whereas in Medieval 1, you could be moving while shielding and still avoid attacks. I'm pretty sure you have to be stood still, or I think walking. I'm certain, I know there's something different about the shields in this game to maybe one that makes it more difficult. Despite assuming many monstrous forms, the evil sorcerer Zarek was reputedly a coward. Legend has it that the great knight Sir Daniel Fortescue vanquished this creature in 1386. That That is actually how he looks as well in Medieval 1 as well. I think that model was taken straight out of it. The great kraken that could smash a bow between his fearsome jaws, some still suppose that the deepest seas still hold creatures like this great beast. Fisherman Phil McCaven caught this example off the coast of Bognor, Regis in 1774. Um, yeah, also the books uh, have a red background rather than a black background in this game. Um, and they also mention Inverness, actually, funny enough, uh, which is my nearest city in the Professor's Diary in this game. There's also a lot less money chests in Medieval 2. There's a lot more money bags. Money chests are more like hidden areas, but even if you're like being careful with money and explore the hidden areas, I think you still don't get as much money as you do money for one. And some of the levels, when you return to them, have a chalice again, and you can recollect it and you earn money instead. And some of the levels, the chalices don't return. I don't know why, it's like it's just a money bag there instead. I know Muffram Hall and Greenwich, the chalices don't return. It's replaced with a money bag, but I think all the other levels still have the chalice you can recollect. I also used to think that the wall of the, the T-Rex broke through here looked like a cat when I was younger, I don't know why. The outline looked a bit like a cat. Um, you got the last few of these uh, baby dinosaurs. The way they open their mouths looks so weird. Oh. Don't know, 
do love me a bit of medieval too, as you know. I feel, me and my uh, sister had our first medieval night like together in a long while, um, just a couple months ago, I think, actually. Uh, we tried to yesterday, but like I was saying, I have a PS1 that's packed in. So I'd order a second-hand one again, see if that works. But um, my sister actually got through all levels by herself. Uh, with a lot of help from me, but when I was younger, I think I was the first to get past all the levels. But she still struggles with Kew Gardens. But the glasses complete the museum. I think we did get the chalice. Yeah, we did. Um, it's funny, because in the Hidden Palace beta of this game, none of the levels had logos yet. So, Because I think every time you like loaded into a level, it still showed the graveyard from Medieval 1. And it was actually, it was actually in the files as well, the Medieval... Uh, the graveyard from Medieval 1. In the uh, Medieval 2 beta. So I don't know if there was a part where you were meaning to go back there, because you're getting very sentimental after losing Kia, and you're reminiscing about old times, so you take the time machine back to the graveyard. But this changed it for the series, I don't know. But yeah, here we are, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Uh, that's what I was right, You've come a long way. I'd save if I was you. I'd save if I was you. I'll save take my time again because I want to talk about memories. <laughs> I won't save over that because I'm currently streaming it on uh, Twitch, so I uh, might potentially continue it. You made it! Nice one, Dan! If you meet that monster, don't be too scared. Look for his Look weak for point. His weak don't point. let things get on top of you. Get on top of them! Afterwards, I'll take you to meet me boss. Yeah, when I was younger, I thought he said, I'll take you to meet me boss. <laughs> also, I, I have a, a very weird uh, thing that I do <laughs> in this level. For some reason, I always hummed like, little random lyrics to uh, level soundtracks when I was younger. In this level, there's a part of the soundtrack that goes like, da 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 When I was younger in music class in Primary 1, there was a song we sung or played where there was a lyric and it was like, Hennessy, Tennessee, Tools the Flute. And it always reminds me of that. It was like, Hennessy, Tennessee, Tools the Flute. That part of the soundtrack. And the part goes like, da 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 da. I always hear, even me, for some reason. And oh, Jesus Christ, the tits on her, kind of like. But I just see that there in the background. But there's like two phases to this boss fight. The Tarantos Rex is pretty easy. Which I feel like the whole boss is pretty easy to me now. But I feel like the quite new to the game. It's pretty full on how you don't even have a life bar at this point where she have like two or three a medical one <laughs> by this point. But yeah, you get your first life bottle after fighting him. Bit? I think that's how to fix straight up anyone, because I think that's the same noise he makes on the ghost ship uh, cutscene. <laughs> yeah, I do believe he's a Triceratops here. But obviously, I think it's just for the pun. <laughs> His name is uh, the Triceratops Rex. And it's a Tennessee, tools the flute. And it's a Tennessee, tools the flute. I get ready to start to go. Sound as well. Yeah, usually when he goes to middle like that and starts screaming, he's about to reveal his weak point. I have so many uh, games that I've already played in Channel before I vanished. I kind of want to really like play again with like a fresh mind. But I also have some Let's Plays that I've not done before that I want to do on the channel too. I've got lots of things in mind, just so little time to do. Okay, basically, if you just keep on the move here, whenever he heads butts the wall, the boulders are going to drop. But if you just keep on the move, then not like that. And there was a sample of what sounded like the Return to the Graveyard music there, if you noticed that in the soundtrack. I do love how this game does sample a lot of the uh, original melodies, but give like a new feel to it. Okay, we'll have to make sure to go to the health area and the in a moment. And we can't switch weapon during this cutscene, so we'll do this one. Yeah, I do love how Medieval 2 added a feature to switch between weapons. I love the dramatic music transition between both bosses. Yeah, basically we, we have to go upward. I think you could be for sure if you're down here, but I'm not going to. Uh, I'm going to travel upward, because I need to get health. Plus you can put fire on you from up above, so we're best to shoot it from above, because you can't be from up there. I, I don't even know if the Transfer Strikes is a she, I don't know why I'm saying that. For some reason, the uh, pterodactyl the, like, strikes me as very feminine. And the Transfer Strikes is very masculine, in my opinion. 
Wait, uh... Dinosaur display. Recent advances in technology have allowed us to accurately rebuild these great beasts for the first time. Many of these giant creatures stood as tall as a house. Their brains were small and weak and had to be protected under a large... Ah, so that's a hint as to how we defeat them. Modern technology allowed us to recreate these creatures. Modern technology in the Victorian area. So basically, uh, we just got to move around a circle here, and when it comes out of a whole not breathing fire, is when it's about to reveal its uh, weak point. So during the fire, we see him not breathing fire as he's flying out. And it's not just a simple one hit on him as well, you have to fire like a few on the pterodactyl. And be quite quick about it, otherwise those little uh, bony dinosaurs will start smacking you and cancelling out your shots. So you have to be quick about it, because they completely fuck it up. Oh, hand of the Tennessee. Oh god, I was close, I'm supposed to get there. We had to stay up above because she like poops fireballs on you if you um, stay down the way. And we got our first life bottle in the game. The life bottles and life vials are darker in colour in this game. I thought it was like the, the very light green of anyone, but they're like a dark green in this one. There we are! Completed part one. Of my Let's Replay, well, the Medieval 2. Just thought to do it without, you know, streaming it. Where I could just, like, fully immerse in the game and enjoy it. <laughs> but that's going to be the end of part one after we speak to the Professor. For some reason, the first visit to the Professor, we can't redeem the child's weapon first. We have to talk to him first. Ah, well it's the only time we see Winston. I see you managed to find him Actually, in the Professor Lab, if you don't care. Thank you, The only time we see him in a cutscene like this. As to what exactly is going on, eh? Ah, uh ah. -uh. Well, allow me to introduce myself. Professor Hamilton Kift, magician, inventor, and master of the occult at your service. If you're wondering what you're doing once again, walking the earth, it appears he never blinks, but Dan does. On the legendary Zarok spellbook. Zarok. Oh, no. Well, people like myself have been searching for that book for centuries. The power within its pages. Oh. <laughs> well, last year, certain pieces of the book turned up, and this is the result. Total chaos. First, we have to find the extent of the damage, don't we? I myself Total chaos room. in this god-awful pit without any power. Top priority is to get this place into suitable shape to start waging a little guerrilla war. <laughs> has Winston told you about collecting magic? Yeah, no, he longer. Has. I didn't know oh, that he meant oh, gorilla. Well, uh, off you go, then. In. Select where you I actually don't know what it means, though. Uh, but I think it meant, like, ooh, ooh also, gorilla. Uh, if you collect the chalice, I should be able to reward you with a new weapon. You can collect this Collect here. this from me here. Dun, dun. Some reason when I was younger, I saw it here dun dun in my head after he said that. Uh, you can actually attack the professor as well, and he reacts to it. <laughs> I used to like that I was younger. Just hitting him and Kia. And if you stay around too long, he has to go at you for it, so we will be doing that. Cane stick, sir? No modern knight should be seen without one. Yeah, we can get through <laughs> these levels pretty quick, but I want to take my time, you know. Just enjoy the game. And we'll list our mission briefing for next time. We might actually list our mission briefing before next time, actually. I'm going to go into recording the next part again now, though. But, yeah, I hope you all enjoy this part. Stay tuned for more if you're enjoying. And I'll be redoing a lot of games I did do live streams of, in case maybe somebody didn't even see that I did live stream them, because they're not in the video section. But um, if you enjoyed what you've seen here, all my social media links are down below. Uh, feel free to give a like and a subscribe as well. A dislike will work too. It works the algorithm. Um, I've got a Discord, actually, if anyone wants to keep up to date with me. I have a Patreon if anyone wants to support me too. Um, and I've got Twitch. I'm live every second week. It's very random when I'm live. If you see me live, feel free to pop in, say hi, and chill. I'm very unprofessional, but I am proudly so. But I love you all so, so much. I'm really glad to be venturing down Venture Lane. Memory lane. <laughs> Again. So, I'll see you all later. Love you all so much. 